Welcome back. So today I'm really stoked to tell you about some exciting new developments at Collimator. Uh, one of the most exciting aspects of this all is the new neural network controller, which essentially uses automatically differentiable um, simulations to design some really impressive and high performance control laws in a really slick and modern way. So we think this is definitely gonna be part of the future of model-based engineering, and I'm really excited to tell you about that, um, but I'll get to that in just a minute. So at Collimator, we've been working uh, around the clock to bring you some really advanced functionality um, in this kind of new Collimator 2.0. And we really believe that this will be uh, kind of part of the future of model-based engineering, where you can seamlessly blend physics-based models, machine learning models, uh, and leverage this kind of you know, automatic differentiability of these, these simulations to do end-to-end -end optimization, to design advanced models and controllers. Um, and so we have some really big updates here. Um, I really also want to highlight some of the awesome work of Collimator's own Jared Callahan, who's been developing a video educational series and companion uh, codes and examples to show you how to do some really uh, interesting control design in this kind of new Collimator environment. And he really builds this up from scratch um, in this four-part series from you know kind of basic control of what you would do to let's say stabilize an inverted pendulum with uh, lqr uh, if you only have partial sensors we look at things like um, state estimation kalman filtering and then he builds in some more advanced concepts like using energy-based control and eventually this kind of neural network controller that we'll talk about in a minute in this new uh, collimator environment, what Jared is, is showing in this uh, inverted rotary pendulum example is that you can uh, very easily, easily, <laughs> easily, you can easily go from having um, a physical system like this Kwanzer hardware we're working with, uh, you can have a digital twin of that physical uh, asset, or you can have a reduced order model or a physics-based model or a machine learning model um, in Collimator. And so what we're doing is we're bridging this kind of sim to real gap that's become increasingly um, kind of central in the robotics and controls community where, you know, we have simulations of an environment, we have an actual physical asset. And what Jared is going to show in this video series is how you can do modeling and control design in the simulated environment and transfer that over to the, the physical environment. And we're gonna build in a lot more sophisticated examples uh, and demos in future videos and in future educational efforts. And I wanna point out, um, this is actually work in partnership between Collimator and Kwanzer. So Kwanzer develops really, really cool controls, educational hardware uh, for control system, robotic systems, autonomy, uh, and increasingly to demonstrate machine learning capabilities. And we've been working together to develop these educational uh, kind of modules and, and curricula and you know, codes and, and working examples so that you can uh, get started using Collimator for control systems and you can test these out on Kwanzaa hardware. And this is also something we're developing into our curriculum at University of Washington. Uh, I got some really, really big updates about some new educational material and programs that we're developing there that I'm hoping to announce uh, very, very soon. So stay tuned. Really exciting stuff happening in this kind of educational, you know, advanced machine learning, optimization and control world working with uh, Collimator, Kwanzaa and UW. Okay, but back to Jared. Um, so a lot of what we're looking at here um, in this video series, again, as I mentioned, is this progression from what you would do in kind of a first year's controls class, you know, stabilize a fixed point, design an LQR controller, assuming you have full state feedback. Uh, now, if you have only partial measurements, how do you develop state estimators, common filters, and integrate that in? Can you work with noisy data or disturbance rejection? Kind of all the classics that we're used to Jared has laid this out in a really clean, kind of easy to follow um, set of Python codes, you know, and collimator examples, but also this video lecture series um, that he's going to walk you through. And in future 
videos in this series, he has also shown more advanced control capabilities like um, energy-based controls. We're used to stabilizing the inverted pendulum, that's kind of basic, but actually swinging the pendulum up in an energy efficient way, that's a relatively advanced concept in controls because fundamentally you're going uh, from one fixed point to another, which means you're dealing with nonlinearity. Okay, and this is supposed to be an introductory example, but you can imagine if you're trying to, you know, land a rocket or um, lots of other, you know, nonlinear control systems, you, you need to have these advanced capabilities. So in the swing up example, Jared walks us through energy based control. So increasing the energy of a system using a smart, efficient control law. Um, both in the simulated environment and then transferring this over to the, um, the actual physical hardware asset. And it's really impressive. You can actually see the system, uh, the physical system kind of increase its energy, go towards the stable fixed point and, uh, and then switch to a stabilizing LQR controller. So I think this is a really cool capability, especially this, um, you know, Jared is a master of you know, modeling, controlling complex systems. And so seeing how he approaches this problem, both starting in a simulated environment and then uh, gradually moving over to the physical hardware and seeing how seamless uh, this process is, I think is really, really helpful uh, as an educational piece. You know, I learned a lot watching these videos too. Um, so I like that a lot. And then uh, one of the things, again, we're most excited about is this progression into kind of from uh, what is classical controls to kind of modern controls to what I'm going to call postmodern or bleeding edge control, which is where nowadays we're getting to this world of kind of reinforcement learning, neural network based policies, uh, differentiable simulations and control, where increasingly we're going to take data from a system and we're going to learn machine learning models and machine learning controllers, neural network controllers, directly from uh, interacting with these, these systems. And in a lot of ways, this is actually easier uh, for the controls engineer, for the designer, than developing a system model from scratch and trying out you know, a textbook controller. When you drag and drop a neural network in as the controller, you're essentially using kind of uh, this automatic differentiability of the simulation to compute these gradients that allow you uh, to train this model very efficiently and with you know offloading a lot of the effort of the design and control uh, to this kind of automatic procedure. Now there's some caveats that go along with that like I'm not saying that controls engineers are going to be obsolete or we're trying to offload our thought process onto these machine learning models but that gives us a lot of bandwidth to think about other things and it streamlines the process so we can get to the same result faster and with less headache. And so one of the things I really like here uh, is Jared's description of kind of where differentiable simulations uh, and kind of, you know, designing these, these neural network controllers fits into the larger context of reinforcement learning. So um, we're going to listen to him describe that now. A typical way to train this neural network would be with some kind of reinforcement learning algorithm, which uh, kind of generally speaking, reinforcement learning can be thought of as sort of a Monte Carlo method for optimizing a feedback controller where we run a bunch of simulations and then compute a quantity that converges in expectation to something we can use to improve the performance of the controller. And there are enough different kinds of uh, RL training algorithms that's hard to speak to generally here. but. Um, as a very simple example, this is kind of a close to the reinforce algorithm. So you do a bunch of simulations, randomizing some inputs, and then compute a quantity that converges in expectation to the policy gradient or the gradient of the objective function J with respect to the neural network parameters theta here. And so this reinforcement learning often works really well, um, but it is famously computationally expensive. So what we're going to try to do is take advantage of the fact that the entire simulation in column meter is differentiable to directly compute the uh, gradients of the objective function in a way that's hopefully more computationally efficient than standard reinforcement learning. Although, of course, we can still uh, introduce some randomness here if we want, and again, that often helps to kind of regularize the cost landscape. So most simulation tools aren't differentiable and can't do this, and what does that mean? Uh, if you're familiar with the uh, basics of neural network training, you might know about the back propagation algorithm which efficiently computes the gradients of all the neural network parameters if we have a single scalar output function. 
And the way the differentiable simulation works is pretty much the same. So what we do is run a forward pass, which is the normal simulation forward in time. And then as you do in back propagation, we have to go backwards in time to the beginning um, it, in what's called an adjoint simulation. Um, and the results of both the forward and adjoint simulation combined can be used to compute the, uh, the gradients we're looking for in, a, in an efficient way. And in Collimator, this uh, simulation can include fully hybrid dynamics, including periodic discrete updates, state machines, guard reset maps uh, triggered by collisions or something like that. It's very flexible and, again, fully differentiable. So with that in mind, uh, let's head back to the app and fill out our uh, controller architecture a little bit more. And the proof's in the pudding. When you actually see these controllers working, when you actually you know, drag, yeah. drop, and try this yourself, and you see for the first time that you can do pretty advanced nonlinear control, um, you know, essentially with a neural network using this kind of automatic differentiability and end-to-end -end optimization capability and collimator, you start to really see the power uh, of these modern tools. And I want you to be using your imagination here. I want you to think beyond the rotary pendulum. So here you can see, you know, this working in actual hardware. What do we do next? Where does this go next? Well, you know, what about things like quad rotors? Can I chuck a quad rotor out of my window and have it learn to fly before it hits the ground? I would love to see you in the community try these advanced kind of machine learning controls demos. Send them to us. We will share them with the world um, if, you, if you give us some cool examples. Tons of other um, examples out there of learning, kind of adaptive learning or learning you know, controllers online. Processes that have been really hard to write down physics, combustion processes, uh, manufacturing processes, <clears throat> you know, uh, material science processes. There's all kinds of systems where the physics has been too hard to write down, uh, where some of these more advanced um, model-free but differentiable optimization-based approaches could make a really big difference. So really excited um, to keep developing this and to you know, learn from the community and share out some of these success stories. Please keep engaging with us. Try out this example in Collimator. Go watch Jared's videos and send us, you know, where are you getting stuck? What is not working for you? Your success stories. What are your success stories? What are you able to get working with this new generation of kind of model based uh, engineering and automatically differentiable controls. Really exciting stuff. Uh, we're gonna keep doing more of these educational videos. Be on the lookout for more collaborations between uh, Collimator, Kwanzer, uh, and also us at UW for you know, new educational content and new examples coming up soon. All right, thank you.